Hi, my name is Mustafa Mikatria from Smart RTOS, stands for Smart Real Time Operating System. Today we are going to talk a little bit about CVS. As usually, there are two tutorials. The first one is about the concept, how it works, and the key words. The second one is a little bit more practical. We are going to set up CVS on a laptop or PC and do some practical examples. Let's start. As you know, CVS is just a tool that helps you to keep track of all your change and work that you do and work on a file. For example, if I have here a file called A and I work on it and make another version of it, version 2 of the A, fine, and another version, the third one. All I want is just to keep track of that when I did it and what I did it and for that we use CVS. When I build the version 1 I have to store it somewhere and in the CVS language it's called repository, it's like a folder or server where we are going to store each version of A. Repository. And this operation here, to save that version of A, it's called check in. I'm going to save it in this folder or repository. I'm going to check in. I work, I make another version. That version is okay for me. So I save it again. Check in. And third one, check in. As I go on and work on that, CVS is going to work for me and keep track of that version 1, version 2, version 3. Now, if I want to take that version, for example, to work on it or see what I did, what I have to do is go on a repository and do the check out. Like I want to take that file back to see what I did here. Right now it's okay, it's kind of easy, but in the real world it's more than one file. Usually we have hundred or even thousand files. In our case, let's make another file B. And I work on that file, so version 1, version 2. At that point I said, okay, now I have to make a release or I have to deliver my work or my project to a client and the client requires this version of A and this version of B. As you can see this is the third version of A and this is the second version of B. And so it's a little bit complicated to manage that. To do that easily we can use what we call the tag. Tag 1 Tag 1 so instead of thinking about version, I don't care about that. I finish the job here, this is what I'm going to deliver, so I tag it here, tag 1. I finish the job here, this is what I'm going to deliver, so I tag it to 1. When I do that, I can put them on the repository and select tag 1, tag 1. That's fine. If I want to take them back and deliver them, all I have to do is a check out with this tag, I want to check all my files, check out all my files with this tag. Now it's okay. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say I have a client that really wants the feature of the B file, but a little bit different than the other clients. So if I make here this version of B, that client is not interested in that version. He wants another one. He said, I want another version of B. What I have to do, I can make what we call a branch and work on a B file. So I can make kind of branch here. And that client says that, okay, I need that version of B with this version of A. What I have to do is use a tag again. At this tag, 
So you have to be back too. As you can see, we can use a tag on file many times on same file. It's okay. So it's kind of for one of my clients is this version of B with this version of A. For my all other clients is this version of B with this version of A. You see? Let's wrap it up just to be sure that we get the concept. We have files and I have to put them on a repository or a folder or server and that action is check in. If I want to take them back and work on them, I can do check out. But instead of going in details of each file, version 1 of A, version 14 of B, version 100 of C, I'm going to put a tag. That makes my life more easy. If I have to do many different ways of B, so I use what we call a branch. And of course, I can use a tag. We can use mini tags on the same file. So if you get that, and I think it's a little bit easy, that is the most important thing to know about CBS. If you have any questions or you want more details, you can still send me an email on smartrtos at gmail.com. I hope that you really enjoyed and I'm waiting for you in the next tutorial.